um, good morning. Today, um, we try to show the derivation that um, um, the cubic expansivity is equal to twice the linear expansivity. Now, we know that um, if we recall that the linear expansivity is equal to L2 minus L1 over L1 change in temperature, right? And we know that um, um, the coefficient of cubic expansivity is equal to A2 minus A1 over A1 change in temperature. So now these two equations are very, very important. So now from, let's call this equation equation one now from this equation one we can now make l2 the subject of the formula by cross multiplying we have l2 minus l1 is equal to alpha l1 change in theta so when when <clears throat> we take l1 to the right hand side we have l2 is equal to l1 plus alpha L1 change in theta. So now, when we factor out L1, we have L2 is equal to L1 1 plus alpha change in temperature. This we can call our equation 1, 2. <clears throat> now, if we look at the coefficient of cubic expansivity that means b beta is equal to a2 minus a1 a1 over times the ch um, change in temperature we can now do the same thing we we do for this length that is by saying by cross multiplying we have a2 a1 is equal to beta a1 change in temperature so now when we take a1 to the right hand side we have a2 is equals to a1 plus beta a1 change in temperature now when we factor out a1 we have a2 equals to a1 beta change in temperature this we can call equation one two three so now let's assume we have a two-dimensional um, um body such that when heat energy initially when um, heat has not been applied let's assume the the area a1 is equal to l1 times l1 you can call equation hash now when heat energy is being applied that means before heat is applied now when you apply heat you now have a2 to be equal to l2 times l2 which you can call that means after heat is applied so now now recall recall that l2 is the same as l1 1 plus alpha change in temperature so we cannot substitute l2 here into this equation we now have a to, to be equal to L1 1 plus alpha change in temperature times L1 1 
because of a uh, change in temperature. So now when we multiply, we have A2 to be equal to L square 1. 1 plus 2 alpha change in temperature plus alpha square delta square. So now recall also that E1 is the same thing as L1 times L1, which is which is the same thing as L square 1. Therefore, E2 <coughs> is the same thing as E1. 1, 1 plus 2 alpha change in theta plus alpha square theta square. So now, you now you recall that from our equation three here that a two is the same thing as a one one plus beta change in temperature. So if we call this our equation four and we call this our equation five, and we will compare equation five and equation four. We have a one one plus beta change in temperature equals to a one one plus two alpha change in temperature plus alpha square the square. So now this can go. So we have one plus beta change in temperature to be equal to 1 plus 2 alpha change in temperature plus a alpha square delta. so now we'll subtract 1 from both sides subtract 1 from both sides we now have beta change in temperature to be equal to 2 alpha change in theta plus alpha square delta square theta. So now we know that if the the half the coefficient of unit responsivity of aluminium is given as less as 0 0.000017 K I'm just trying to give um, an example. Now, when you take the alpha square of aluminium, for instance, we notice that the value becomes so, so very, very negligible, such that alpha, 2 alpha, change in theta, plus alpha square, theta square, theta, becomes the same thing as 2 alpha change in theta. Um, I would like to continue and then point so beta change in temperature will not be equal to 2 alpha change in temperature so now when you divide both sides by beta you will not be left with beta is equal to twice alpha <coughs> 